Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed, Are you washed in, the blood, in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Do you rest each moment in the crucified? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robes be white? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Will your soul be ready for the mansion's bright? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the, blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Lay aside the garments that are stained with sin. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood? Well, good morning. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Well, come on. We can do better than that. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? Happy Father's Day to all the dads out there. You may be seated for just a moment. A few announcements here. Uh, we have these Connect cards. Uh, they're available. You can get them from an usher or they're in the pockets in front of your seat. If it's your first time with us, please take a moment. Just fill this out. You don't have to fill the whole thing out. Just as much as you feel comfortable putting, but we would love to know that you're here. We'd love to know that uh, how we can pray for you uh, and, so, and, and how we can serve you. So take a moment, if you would, fill that out for us. A few announcements. Men of Iron Cookout tomorrow, June 19th. Can you believe it's almost July? So tomorrow is June 19th. It's going to be a great time. Men uh, come out at 7 p.m. There's going to be sausages, hot dogs, uh, and we're going to be finishing up our study. Also, worship in the park, August 6th. Uh, that will be our church picnic this year. It will be at, at Yates Town Park. So on August 6th, if you show up at the front door here, just know that you'll probably be the only one here because um, we're going to be over at Yates Town Park. So uh, it's going to be a great time uh, of worship, fellowship, and food. And you know what? Invite a friend because you may have friends in your circles that they would never uh, consider at this point in their life coming on a Sunday morning into a church building, but they'll come where there's food to a church picnic, amen? So invite those friends. It's a great opportunity to invite folks to come out, and uh, ha we'll pray that they have an encounter with the Lord, amen? Uh, also, no evening service tonight because it is Father's Day, so dads, enjoy your evenings with your family. And then just a reminder, 7 p.m. Wednesday, we are continuing our Bible study, The Story. It's been a great study. Uh, if you haven't been with us so far, that's fine. You can jump in at any point. Come and join us. It's been a, a great study, great time of fellowship. All right, let's pray. Lord, we thank you for this day, this Father's Day. We thank you for the dads that are in our lives and the blessing that they are. We thank you for, for the blessing that you are in our life. 
our Heavenly Father. Lord, let us never take your love for us for granted. We love you, Lord. We praise you. We worship you. We lift up your holy name. We invite your Holy Spirit to take the lead in this service, Lord. We thank you for your presence. We love you. We worship you, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's worship the Lord together, church.
the day when my faith shall be signed. The cloud be rolled back and the song the song shall be sung and the Lord shall be sung even so it is now in my song it is well with my soul well with our soul because of your blood, Jesus.
thank you for your presence, oh God. You're worthy to be praised, oh God. In his presence there is joy beyond all measure. And at his feet peace of mind can still be found. If you have a need, I know
leaves us nor forsakes us all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God I will sing of the goodness
Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your presence this morning. We thank you that you are a good God. We just take this moment and we stand in your presence. Just praise the Lord in your own way, right where you are. Take a moment between you and him and just let him know how good he is, how thankful you are. Lord, just continue to lead in this service. We surrender to your Holy Spirit, Lord. We thank you for each person that is here. We pray that each person would be blessed today as they receive your word, Lord. As I bring the message, Lord, let it not be my words, but let it be your words that you have for this body. By the leading of the Holy Spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Dan because he is going to uh, do baby dedications and child dedications for us today. Um, so something about uh, our time in Wisconsin, uh, as small church pastors, the pastor is always busy and the pastor's wife is always busy. And so we actually never had the opportunity to have Aurora dedicated uh, Elias was dedicated back uh, during our time in Arkansas by our then pastor Gary Bell, uh, but Aurora has not yet been dedicated, and uh, we have a couple of other dedications today too, and so I'm going to turn it over to Pastor Dan and go for it. Well, stay right up here, Pastor. How wonderful it was to uh, see Pastor Brian up here praying with his child in his hand, little Theo. One of the greatest privileges and honors that I've had during my tenure as a pastor is to dedicate little ones to the Lord. And I always remember the thrill that my father had when he dedicated children. Well, many, many years ago, my dad dedicated the Fuller children, Ben and Dan, Christina, and he even dedicated their mom, Cindy Scholes, at the time. 
Well, as you know, and we've been praying uh, for Dan, Cindy had ALS, and God took her home. Her son, Ben, had ALS, and God took him home. And now Dan is in the arms of Jesus and took him home as well. But God always answers the prayer of the parents and the grandparents that entrust their children and grandchildren in the arms of the Lord. They will always 100% find themselves in the arms of Jesus at the end of their life. Thank you, Lord. And so it is my privilege today. And thank you, Pastor, for giving me the honor of dedicating your children. And so, Whitney, if you would come up, and if you would bring little Aurora with you, and you come on up to Elias, and I'd like to ask little Keegan Laverne Cree and his mom, Tiffany, and grandparents, if you'd like to come up and, and stand with them, Cheryl and Russell, and anyone else that would like to come up and stand as we dedicate Keegan. And if you don't mind, Tiffany, if we would come right up here and So warn uh, Whitney and Pastor Brian that there's something that I like to do. I like to give them a little bit of smooching and see how they taste. And you know, they've always tasted good. I don't think it's probably going to be any different today. And, and, and Elias, I'll give you a kiss too if you feel left out. If you don't, we'll be good. We'll do a handshake. We'll do a handshake. God bless you. So we bring Keegan Laverne Cree, who was born January 2nd, 2023, uh, to Tiffany Cree, Aurora Nicole, Nicole McDowell, born November 28th, 2020, and Theo Michael, born March 2nd, 2023, in dedication to the Lord.
Jesus and speaking to his disciples. He sat down. He called the 12 disciples over to him. Then he said, anyone who wants to be first must take last place and be the servant of everyone else. Then he put a little child among them. Taking the child in his arms, he said to them, anyone who welcomes a little child like this on my behalf welcomes me. And anyone who welcomes me welcomes my Father who sent me. And also from Mark 10, then they brought little children to him that he might touch them, but the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter in. And he took them up in his arms laid his hands on them, and he blessed them. Today, a charge to the parents. Do you today recognize these children as a gift of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing? If so, say we do. And do you now dedicate your children to the Lord who gave them to you, surrendering all worldly claims upon their lives in the hope that they will wholly belong to God. If so, say, we do. And do you pledge as parents that with God's fatherly help, you will bring up your children in the discipline and instruction of the Lord, making every reasonable effort with patience and love to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord into their lives if so say we do and do you promise to provide through God's blessings for the physical emotional intellectual and spiritual needs of Keegan Aurora and Theo looking to your own Heavenly Father for the wisdom love and strength to serve them and not to use them if so say we do and do you promise God helping you to make it your regular prayer that by God's grace your children will come to trust in Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of their sins and for the fulfillment of all God's promises, even eternal life. And in this faith, follow Jesus as Lord and obey his teachings. If so, say we do. Let us pray. Keegan, Aurora, and Theo, together with your parents who love you dearly, and this people, this congregation who care about the outcome of your faith, I dedicate each of you to God, surrendering together with them all worldly claims upon your life in the hope that you will belong wholly to God forever in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Let's give them a hand this morning. about Theo. I know about Theo, but I don't know about his grandpa. Or Keegan. Keegan, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, his grandpa's great. All right. Amen. Well, thank you so much, Pastor Dan, for be, being willing to do that and uh, that's something we'll always remember. You, you 
leading their dedication. So thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Uh, the rest of the children, why don't you come on up? We're going to prepare to dismiss you. Right. Whoa. That's all right. How's it going, kiddos? <laughs> well, it's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. How many of you been have been really good to your dad today? How many of you cooked him breakfast this morning? Oh, you guys got work to do. All right. That's okay. The, the day is still young. You've got plenty of time, right? I also want to remind you about C Kids Crusade. July 9th to the 12th, 7 to 8.30. It's going to be an awesome time. If you've been before, I'm sure you know that. Uh, but there's going to be drawings for attendance, for bringing uh, friends. There's going to be good prizes. Can you guys say good? Good prizes. Nightly door prizes, other contests, music, Bible lessons. It's going to be an awesome time. I also heard that there's going to be food, and somehow that ended up on some of the flyers, and it wasn't supposed to, but so I would grab one of those flyers. Those are the limited edition Kids Crusade flyers. They might be worth something one day, am I right, for the printing error? No, uh, but there is going to be food, too. It's going to be an awesome, awesome time. So invite, invite your friends. You can tell them about the food. People, people like food. Do you guys like food? Yeah. So invite your friends. It's going to be an awesome time. And it's going to be a life-changing time. You guys are going to learn things about God's Word. And God's Word is a powerful thing that will change your life forever. Amen? Let me pray over you guys before I send you away. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these kiddos. We thank you for the blessing that they are. We thank you for the opportunity to love them and care for them and, and be the stewards of them, but be their parents, be their teachers. Lord, let us always remember to instill your word in these lives so that they may carry it with them the rest of their days, so that they may know what to do in every situation as they love and serve you. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, God bless you guys. You are dismissed. Well, amen. Does anybody have a pen? Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. I might lose my place if I don't have a pen. Then I'll be in all kinds of trouble. All right. Well, praise the Lord. Um, ushers, if you'll come forward, we're going to prepare to take up this morning's tithes and offerings. What an awesome job by our worship team this morning, leading us into the presence of the Lord. Let's give the Lord a hand clap one more time today. He is good, amen. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity to once again come together on this Father's Day. Uh, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to give, to invest in your kingdom and your work, Lord. We pray that you would use us as a church to to proclaim and share the gospel here in our local community and around the world. We pray for all these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. God bless you as you give this morning.
All right. Well, happy Father's Day once again, or as Aurora has been calling it, happy Daddy Valentine's Day <laughs> to all of our dads out there. We love and appreciate our dads. Amen. On Father's Day, we say thank you to our dads for being there. And for those of us who are fathers ourselves, we reflect on what an amazing blessing that is. Turn in your Bibles to start out today. We're going to start out in Luke chapter 15 and verse 11. Before I jump into that, though, I want to share a little story about my dad. Is that okay? So when I was young, uh, my parents were, were separated at a, a very young age, and so I was actually, I was born in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and when I was less than a year old, uh, I moved to New York with my mom and my brother, lived there for many years in the capital region, and during that time, though, uh, I would, of course, go to visit my father frequently, and I, I loved that. I loved going to see my dad. Uh, my dad was one, he was, he was always there for his kids. He cared about his kids more than anything in the world. And, um, you know, he, he fought for years for his kids. He eventually uh, got custody of my brother and me uh, after many years of fighting. Uh, but during this season in life, we would go and visit him and uh, so we'd go from New York to Pittsburgh and stay with Dad, and he would always try to create great memories with his kids. And that's important, isn't it? Uh, you know, in a society that's so focused on stuff, if you ask Whitney, man, I don't like stuff. Stuff costs money. Stuff gets ruined. Stuff ends up in the garbage pretty quick. So I'm not a fan of stuff, but what I do think is so important is that we invest in making memories with our families and with our kids. And my dad always did that. He always made that a priority. And one thing he would do is he would often take us to uh, Pittsburgh Pirates games. Now, if you're wondering who the Pittsburgh Pirates are, they are not a minor league team. Uh, they are, in fact, a major league baseball, <laughs> baseball team in Pittsburgh. Uh, but in that time, on you know, sort of similar to like this time, uh, they played sort of like a minor league team. So tickets were very, very cheap. And so dad would take us all the time and we had a blast, but he would take us to this place. Who knows what this place is? Three Rivers Stadium, that's right. That's Three Rivers right there. Do I, do I sound old for knowing that? Um, so my grandma actually took this picture probably in about 92, 93, uh, but dad would take us there all the time. And the thing about Three Rivers Stadium is the capacity of it was built for Steelers games. Now the Steelers always played really well, so it was hard to get into Steelers games. I mean, tickets were very expensive if you could even get them. So it had a very large capacity. It could seat a large number of people. So, needless to say, for Pirates games where they had a hard time giving the tickets away, there was plenty of extra seating. And we'd go to the Pirates games and we'd have these close up front seats. And there was a rule at Three River Stadium that for Pirates games, after like the third or fourth inning, you could take whatever seat you wanted. You could move anywhere as long as it was available because there was just so much available. So you just needed to buy a ticket to get in, you had to be in your seats for the first few innings, and then you could sit anywhere. Well, my dad always got pretty good tickets because they were, you know, they were affordable, and, you know, we, we liked being close and up front to the action, or at least he did. And what I would do is I would just wait. I would wait for that third or fourth inning to come. I was just waiting and waiting, and then it would come, and I'd be like, all right, Dad, let's move our seats. And he'd be like, move our seats? Like, we're... We're like right up to the action. Can't, like, can't you see it right there? No, no, I want to go to the top. I want to go to the very top as far as we can go. So dad was like, all right. All right, if you want to go to the top, 
we'll go to the top. So we would take the steps and just go and go and go and finally made it to the top. And we'd sit down there. We'd sit at the very top row. <laughs> we'd be so high up. I'd be like, oh, this is cool, Dad. Look how high we are. Look at we could look at we could they're like little ants down there. We it's amazing. And then about after five minutes I'd go, you know, Dad, I, I liked our our other seats better. Well, let's go back down. And of course Dad would be like, Really? We just made the trip all the way up here. Yeah, Dad, I want to go back down. So he'd get up with us and We'd make the trip all the way back down. And then I'd sit there for a while, and I'd decide I wanted to go all the way back up again. And he took us all the way back up again. You know, that's a father's heart, isn't it? He, he didn't care about getting the extra, the extra exercise in. He didn't care about what quality he perceived the seats to be. He just loved that he was spending time with us, that he was creating memories. And all these years later, I still remember that. Uh, a father's heart is incredible. They are such a blessing to us. And for those of you that have dad in your life, a word that probably comes to mind is hero. I know it does for my dad, Let's look at this from a biblical perspective, the heart of a father. One of my favorite places to look at this is the parable of the prodigal son. We're here in Luke 15, chapter 15 and verse 11. Let's dig into this. And he said, there was a man who had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the share of of property that is coming to me. And he divided his property between them. Now many days later, the younger son gathered all that he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he lived responsibly, invested wisely. Is that what it says? No, it says, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And then what happened? And when he had spent everything, a severe Famine came across the country. There is a whole lot that we can learn from this parable. And one thing right here is something that I really think we need to understand in our society today, because if you look statistically speaking, over half of Americans, studies show, could not cover a $500 emergency expense if they had to over half. That's, that's just mind-boggling to me because there, that's not how God wants his people to live. And people may say, well, I just can't afford to do anything other than live paycheck to paycheck. And you know what? That's not true because if we will live, when it comes to finances, and you know what? It's okay to talk about finances in church, isn't it? Because the Bible talked about finances a whole lot. And when it comes to our finances and our personal finances, God doesn't want us to be living with the stress of, am I going to lose my house next month? Am I going to be able to make the payments? Am I going to be able to pay my car insurance when it comes? God doesn't want us to be living with that kind of stress. And that's why he talks about money in his word and he addresses the importance of stewardship. And there, there are very specific biblical principles related to finances that if we follow them, we don't have to be struggling from month to month or paycheck to paycheck. And I'm not going to go deeper into that today because that's not what today's sermon is about. But I, I did want to let you know, part of what God is calling the church to do is to meet needs to meet needs, and that's why we, we talk about these things in church. That's why we offer counseling and coaching for, for married couples, and that's why we offer uh, classes. We're doing one on Sunday nights now. Uh, the, uh, it's, it's, I've heard it's an awesome class uh, on, on family, and, and those things are important. And another thing, 
something that affects our families and our relationships is finances. The Bible has a whole lot to say about finances. And so actually, beginning in September, for our Sunday night study, we are going to start a Crown Financial course, and we are going to op- open this up to the whole community. And it's just a very basic class. It's called The Essentials of Biblical Stewardship. And it's going to talk about what does God's Word teach us about finances. So whether you feel like you're in good shape, whether you maybe need some help and coaching, or whether you know somebody who needs some help and coaching, I encourage you to take part in this class. We're going to see what God's Word has to say about finances and biblical stewardship. I think for a lot of folks, it'll change your life. But it's so important. You know what? People, when people win the lottery, so often you see them, they got the big check up there, right? And they're so happy and oh, their life's changed forever, and then they'll do the follow-up with them like 10 years later, right? And what's going on? They're totally broke. They're bankrupt. They got nothing. Why, why does that happen? It's, it's very similar to what happened here. This son took this entire inheritance, and he thought, oh, the money's just flowing. Things are great. He never stopped to think about the rainy day. And part of good stewardship is we stop and we think about the rainy day. We stop and we realize God's blessing us and he'll always be blessing us. But there may be seasons in our life where it's not necessarily in dollars, right? And we need to be good stewards of what God has given us. And if we are, when that rainy day comes, We'll, we'll walk through with comfort. It's so simple, just if we'll follow biblical principles related to finances. So that's one thing we can pull from this, but that's not our focus today. Verse 14, And when he had spent everything, a severe ca- famine came across this country, and he began to be in need. So he didn't understand this principle of stewardship. Why his dad didn't teach him about it, I'm not sure. But if I was going to give a big inheritance to my kids, I would teach them how to manage it. That's important for us too, isn't it? Teach your kids. You should always be teaching your kids biblical principles. We should always be doing that, even as it relates to to how we manage money and how we lead our family. Verse 15. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into his fields to feed pigs. Wow. Now check this out. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs ate, and no one gave him anything. This was before the days of any sort of federal minimum wage, right? If, if you were poor, you were not in a good situation in this time. And think about this. This is a kid who had everything. He grew up with privilege, and he inherited so much. He had it all, and he lost it all because of his foolishness. Verse 17 here. But when he had came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread? But I perish here with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. In other words, it says he came to his senses. He was like, look at me here. In a faraway place, hungry, doing this hard labor for little pay. He realizes my father's servants have it better than I do right now. And so he came to his senses, and he says, I'm going to go home. I'm going to repent. I'm going to make things right. And then he says, you know what? I'm I'm even going to tell my dad. Watch this, verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced and kissed him. 
the love of a father. We're going to jump back to this. But look at what the son said to him. And the son said to him, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. You ever feel like that when you've messed up? I'm just not worthy. But God says we are worthy. Not because of anything we've done, but because of the work that was done on the cross. The Father's love. This son who took his money, squandered it all away, ran away from home, never called home, never called on Father's Day, never sent a birthday card. You get what I'm saying here? He just ran away. He left the family. Took the money and ran. Now, human nature, for a lot of people, if somebody did that to you, might be, oh, well, I'm shutting them off. I, I want nothing to do with them. But it's different when we're talking about a father and a son relationship, isn't it? And we can see that here. His dad embraces him. He feels compassion. He runs. He embraces him. He kisses him. And the son says, Dad, I'm not worthy. This is true repent repentance. This is true repentance. And when we mess up and when we repent and have truly repentant hearts, God is faithful and just to forgive our sins, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so what does the father do here? This is a father's love. But the father said to his servants, bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. For this my son was dead. Now he is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, so often, I think when people read this parable, they just kind of skip over this, yeah, he put, a, he put, what, a coat on him and a ring and gave him shoes for his feet. But this is very significant, the ring part especially. Because in that time, families, especially families that were well off, they would have what is called the signet ring. And it was basically, uh, it would be worn on the pinky, and it was basically a stamp. It was a seal to sign documents. And only the family members had it. So if you were a part of the family, you had that signet ring. You had the family seal, and you went to the market to get goods. You could stamp it, saying, I'm good. my dad's good for this. He's going to pay for it. You entered into an agreement, needed to sign something, you could stamp it. My dad's good for this. He'll take care of it. So this is so significant. The prodigal son returns, and dad restores him completely to his former place in the family and in the household. He gives him the credit card. He gives him the keys to the Ferrari, and he says, welcome home, son. He restores him completely to where he was before. That's what Jesus did for us. What a powerful testimony that is. That is a father's love. And you can see there's a key difference here. Watch what happens next. This is comparing a father's love to another individual's love. Verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house. He heard music and dancing. He called one of the servants and asked what these, he asked what these things meant. And the servant said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has received him back safe and sound. And his older brother was so happy that his brother was home, and they all lived happily ever after. Is that what it says? No. Verse 28. 
It says he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him, but he answered his father. In other words, his father, he came out and he begged him, come in, your brother is home. This, is, this day is amazing. We're, we're celebrating as a family. Come in. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you, and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this, your son, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, reckless living, for him you killed the fatted calf. And he said to him, son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your brother was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. You see the difference between a father's love and even a brother's love? A father's love is powerful, and it's something we should be so thankful for. Amen? You know what? The older son, I guarantee you he was not perfect. I guarantee you dad got him out of plenty of pickles in his lifetime. But he was like, oh, well, dad, <clears throat> I have never taken all your money and left and wasted it and never called and never told you where I was. And he gets all high and mighty about it. When surely he has made mistakes, surely his dad has gotten him out of pickles. Don't we do that sometimes? Even if it's just subconsciously? We look at others and say, oh, well, they're not as worthy of forgiveness as I am. That's a dangerous way to be thinking. That's a dangerous road to go down. Because all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And you know what? God doesn't see things. God is just, and he doesn't see things the way we as people see things. We always look at it this way. We always think to ourselves, well, which sin is, is worse? Who was the more bad person? But what God looks at is the fact that there had to be a price paid for our sins, and no matter what the sin was, the price that was paid was the same for all of us. The price paid on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, it was the same price paid for all of us. So we are not any more worthy than anybody else, but through God's grace, we can receive his free gift of redemption. Amen? So we've talked about a father's love, and you may be saying, oh, well, that's, that's all good, Pastor, but, you know, my dad, he's been absent. He's not been in my life. And I'm sure that that is the case for a lot of folks, even here, whether you're watching online or here in person. And you know what? If, if that happened to you, I'm sorry that happened to you. That, that, was, that was not in God's will. That was not his plan. But unfortunately, we live in a fallen and hurting and dying world, and uh, people sometimes in their, their sin nature, they, they make poor decisions. But all of us, all of us have a heavenly father who cares for us. All of us have a heavenly father who cares for us. Did you know that as a believer, as a Christian, you are royalty? Turn in your Bibles to John chapter 1 and verse 12. John 1, 12, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, talking about Jesus, amen, all who received him, believed in his name, he gave the right, everybody say right, to become children of God, 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You have the right to be called a child of God. If you've received him, if you believe in him, you have the right to be called a child of God. You are adopted into his family. Wow. That's powerful. That's powerful. You know, so often, you know, uh, when we talk about our love for our country, which we're so blessed to, 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 to be in this country where we have all these freedoms, and uh, so often we talk about our rights as citizens, and we have amazing rights. We talk about those things, we always talk about those things with confidence, but so often Christians, when it comes to their rights as a child of God, they still are stuck kind of in the guilt and shame phase. And we shouldn't, we shouldn't be doing that because for the mistakes of the past, whatever we've done, if we have repented, we are forgiven. The price has already been paid. And sometimes people will just, I, I see Christians all the time, they just take the attitude, well, uh, well, I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. But you know what? Yeah, you're an old sinner saved by grace, but you've been redeemed. You have a right, a right to be called a child of God. You, if you're struggling with guilt and shame for things that have happened in the past, the price has already been paid for those things. You need to put them behind you. You need to look ahead with confidence in the freedom that you have. You have a right to be called a child of the Most High God. Galatians chapter 4. Turn there. Galatians chapter 4. In verse 4, but when the fullness of time has come, God sent forth his son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons and daughters of God. Wow. I looked up adoption in the dictionary, in the Webster Dictionary. Of course, we know what adoption means, right? But sometimes when we look at the definition, it just really speaks something different to us. And I love what the Webster Dictionary has to say about adoption. It means to take a child legally as your own by choice. God chose you. He adopted you. He took you into his home. He gave you the right to be called sons and daughters of God, and he did it by choice because he loves you, because he cares for you. That's a father's love. So all of us have something to celebrate on Father's Day. No matter what our circumstances have been, all of us have something to celebrate. Amen? I want to close with this illustration and... Um, Rick, if you wouldn't mind coming to start play, uh, play a little keys for us. Um, this is a story about a guy named William Dixon. He was a widower, a widower who had also lost his only son. One day he saw a neighbor's house on fire. Although the aged owner was rescued, his grandson was trapped upstairs in the blaze. Dixon didn't hesitate. Climbing an iron pipe on the side of the house, he went up and he lowered the boy to safety, badly burning his own hands in the process on the overheated pipes. Shortly after the fire, the boy's grandmother died, leaving him alone, an orphan. As the town council considered what to do, two men appeared requesting custody of the boy. One was a father who had lost a son and wanted to adopt the orphan. The other was Dixon, the man who had rescued the orphan 
from that fire. The first man gave his reasons for wanting to adopt the boy. Then it was Dixon's turn. He stood before the council, simply raised up his hands and showed the scars. And the council's decision was easy. They awarded the boy to Dixon. Jesus paid the price for you and me on the cross. We are bought with a price. All of us have sinned and fallen short of God's glory. All of us need redemption. And there's only one way that redemption comes, and it's through Jesus Christ. I'd like everyone to bow your heads and just close your eyes right where you are this morning. Maybe you're here today and you're, you're saying, you know, I've never made the decision to follow Jesus. I've never made that decision to accept that gift of grace. I want to give you that opportunity this morning. If you're here and you want to make a decision to follow Jesus, Maybe you were serving the Lord at one time and you've fallen away and you want to recommit your life. Just slip up your hand right where you are. I just want to know who we're praying for. We'll take a moment and wait on the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is drawing you, I encourage you to just slip up your hand so we can pray with you. It has nothing to do with our own works. It has nothing to do with how good we are. There's nothing that we've done on our own or we could do on our own to deserve God's grace, but he gives it freely because the price has already been paid on the cross. Let's just take a moment and wait on the Holy Spirit. I don't see any hands this morning, but that's good because that means that we have that hope and we can go and take it to others. Amen? So let's do that. Lord, I pray that you would use each person in here to take that hope that we have. Use us to share it with others. Let us not keep it to ourselves, but let us be a light in an otherwise dark world. Lord, let us walk in the knowledge, in the confidence that we have the right to be called sons and daughters of God. We thank you for the price that was paid on the cross for the forgiveness of sins, that redemptive work. Lord, while we wait for that day where we were before you, before our Heavenly Father, use us in this time between now and then, to have a kingdom impact here in the world. I pray a blessing over each person as we prepare to go. I pray a blessing over the fathers. Thank you for the great blessing that they are in our lives. We thank you for them, Lord. We thank you for that father's heart. Lord, show us how we can be a blessing to our dads today. I pray for each person as we go our separate ways until we come together again. I pray for your provision and protection in their everyday lives. For each person here in their households, I pray for health. I pray that you would bless each person in all their endeavors. Let everything they put their hands to prosper. Whether it be school, work, whatever you've put on their heart, whatever you have called them to do, let them prosper in it. Lord, I pray that you would teach us to love one another the way you love us. 
We can't do that by our own power or our own might, but by the leading of the Holy Spirit, give us the ability, Lord. We pray for these things in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, amen. Well, God bless you guys. We have gifts for the dads, so I'm going to make my way to the back, and we want, uh, Whitney and I would like to give those to you. Uh, God bless you guys. Happy Father's Day, or as Aurora would say, Happy Daddy Valentine's Day. We love you guys. Have a great week.